you think I get you get a piece? Get a piece. Why you can't sit back and be my piece? Hi, you guys. So I'm going to give you guys tips and advice on how to make an A in pathophysiology. Whether you're a nursing student or an MP school, this video is helpful. Pathophysiology is basically what's going on in the body when a specific disease is occurring and what are the signs and symptoms of the disease or clinical manifestations. So let's look at asthma, for example. So asthma... We know like our signs and symptoms are like wheezing, shortness of breath, tachycardia, high heart rate, tachypnea, increased respiratory rate. But with pathophysiology, in addition to looking at the signs and symptoms, we're trying to figure out what is going on in the body when, a, when the person has asthma. So short answer for what's going on in the body when a person has asthma is that you have bronchial hyperresponsiveness. And asthma is airflow obstruction that is reversible. So that's asthma in simple terms. But there's a whole process that goes on in the body before we get to the bronchial hyperresponsiveness and the airway constriction. So it essentially starts off with being exposed to an allergen or an irritant. And then there's a whole process going on in the body with different cells and everything and then you'll get this outcome with you know your signs and symptoms with the wheezing and shortness of breath so with each disease that's how you're looking at things like what's going on in the body when this specific disease occurs patho for me ends april 24th i've already experienced three exams i made a's on those so i think i can give you guys a little bit of advice on how to make A's on your patho exams. In nursing school, MP school, you have to be organized. So it always starts off with being organized and getting you a planner. So I bought a planner at the beginning of the school year back in August. So with my planner, the beginning of the semester, I take my syllabus and just copy my syllabus down into my planner. So with patho, as far as the syllabus goes, I would write down my exam dates and also when we had surveys due. So our grade in patho for MP school primarily comes from our exams and our surveys. So we have four exams during the semester. So two of our exams are 100 questions, then the other two exams are 75 questions. The exams that are 100 questions are worth 27% of our grade separately and the exams that are 75 questions are worth 20% of our grade separately so the two exams that are 75 questions are 40% of our grade and the two exams that are 100 questions are 54% of our grade and then our surveys are worth 6% of our grade we have six surveys so the surveys are really simple there are one question survey with two options and they basically ask which topic you want more information on and whichever topic has the most votes, the professors will post more information regarding that topic. So it's very simple. They give you like at least three days to complete the survey. It's only one quick question. Patho is a very content heavy class as are pharmacology and health assessment and other courses in nursing school and MP school. With my patho course in MP school, on our exams, we can be tested on anywhere from 9 to 12 chapters per exam. So that's a lot of content to study. So our lectures in patho can range anywhere from 1 to 3 hours. So those 3 hour lectures are very long. So my program through Vanderbilt is online. So I watch my lectures online and we can watch them at any time. So I prefer to watch my lectures during the morning. I'm more productive in the mornings. So you have to get your study environment and your study area together. And what I mean by that, you know, find some place in your apartment or your house, you know, that's going to be your designated study area or your area where you watch your lectures. So I primarily study in my room or in our game room, which is like just the office space really. So those are my two primary study areas. Now I know some of you aren't able to study in your house or apartment, so you might study in Starbucks or the library. You just have to find somewhere where you are able to be productive and you're able to study and get your assignments done. Now with me, when I'm studying or watching lectures, it has to be completely quiet. 
So when I'm watching my lectures, my phone is usually in the other room and it's put on silent, you know, just as it would be if I was in the classroom. So I can be focused on watching my lecture and not be distracted by anything. I'm old school when it comes to watching my lectures. So I always print off my PowerPoints and put them in my binder. So while the lecture is going on my computer, I am jotting down notes and important info on my PowerPoints. Now I know some of my classmates, they use like the Notability app where you're able to like take notes on your computer on the actual PowerPoint. I don't like that. I'm very old school. I just like getting a pen, colorful pens. I like having different color pens and just writing on PowerPoints, you know, having that paper in front of you instead of doing everything on the computer. And watching your lectures, that's also helping to prepare you for studying as well. So that can account in your studying time too. So now we're getting to studying. So my study routine, I pretty much use the same study routine in all my classes and my method has proven successful for me. So the way everybody retains information or learns information is different. So I found a method that works for me and this method may or may not work for you. So in regards to studying, I'm a big procrastinator. That's one of my weaknesses. I like to procrastinate a lot. But I generally like to give myself at least a week in advance to prepare for my test. My professors, they didn't have to do this, but they're very gracious. So in Patho, we have study guides for each unit. If you complete the study guide for each unit and just study the study guide, you will be well prepared for the exams. Now our professors did give us a disclaimer saying that some of the content on the study guides will not be on the exam. Also on our exams, there will be some content that's not asked on the study guides. So primarily the way I study in pathophysiology, if your professor has given you guys a study guide for each of the units, just study that. So with pathophysiology, I just use the study guide and study that and I'm well prepared for my test and it has helped me to make an A on all three, all three of my exams. And I'm definitely hoping for an A on my fourth exam. So with the study guides, with each of the study guide questions, I write the answer on a flash card. Now this Ziploc bag contains all of the index cards from our previous three exams. The way I learn material and the way I study I have to make flashcards through the study guides. I memorize the flashcards and then I test my knowledge by practice questions. Now a lot of people ask, well where can I find practice questions? Usually you can look online, just type in pathophysiology practice questions. You know, you can find different practice questions on Quizlet or just different resources. So also don't be afraid to look in the front of your book. So. In the front of your book, it always has a resource, an online resource that goes with the book that has practice questions in that online resource. So our patho book is made by Elsevier Evolve. So all you have to do is just log on to Elsevier and register and you should be able to find practice questions. So our um, professor actually sent us a resource through our textbooks that we're able to log into and complete practice questions that will help us prepare for our exams. And also in the online resource it has chapter reviews which are basically just summaries of each of the chapters. So I read the chapter reviews before each exam and I also do practice questions that are on our Evolve Elsevier resource content online that our professor gave us access to. So that helps me prepare for the exam tremendously. And also when it comes to nursing textbooks, MP school textbooks, they are very thick. Like this textbook is huge. So in the beginning of the semester, our professors told us use the book as your last resource. All the information should be in the PowerPoints. And I pretty much stuck to that. I only look at the book. I rarely look at the book. Like I can count on one hand how many times I've actually opened the book. For pathophysiology, I don't really have time to read the chapters, 
but our professor's PowerPoints are very detailed. So I learn everything from the PowerPoint. I only open up my book if I'm not understanding something or need more information on a topic. So like I said, I rarely use our pathophysiology book. I mean, look how thick it is. I know in nursing school, I read my textbooks, which I think it is good for nursing students to try to read their textbooks. But in MP school, MP school, you should definitely read your textbooks, but with MP school, since you've already completed nursing school and, you know, you have background as a registered nurse, most of the time, your patho, your pharmacology, and your health assessment courses in MP school are just like a review of the things that you've learned in nursing school, but remember, it's more so geared to you being an MP, being able to diagnose patients. To be successful in any class in nursing school or MP school, you need to know your learning style. Like I was saying earlier in the video, so I'm a very visual learner. So I have to make flashcards and, you know, different color pencils, different color markers. And that's just how I learn. And then applying my knowledge to practice questions, just testing my knowledge to see how well I retain the information or if there is something that I need to study more. So test day comes so we can either take our test in the morning from like 7 to 9 or we can take our test at night from 8 to 10. I always choose the night option because I usually study during the day. What did I tell you guys? Procrastination. I procrastinate too much and me taking my test at night has proven well for me having that extra time during the day to study. With my fourth exam, I'm definitely going to try to take my exam in the morning just so I can get it out the way. So I'm definitely going to start studying. I'm actually preparing for my exam next week because our final exam is April 24th. I hope this video has helped you guys with your studying for pathophysiology. If you guys have any tips or advice for nursing students or MP students on how to pass pathophysiology leave them down below let us know what works for you i will see you guys in my next video